Are your drives running low on drive space? Do you know how much room you are wasting on duplicate media and unneeded files in your Plex libraries? Do you want to be able to answer that question? By the end of this video, you'll know the answer and be able to resolve it. When I started researching this for myself, I didn't think I had any space that was really wasted. I was kind of shocked when I found out I had over 20 gigs worth of data that was just taking up wasted space. And that was just in two media libraries. Set back, relax, and I'll show you how easy it is to clean up your Plex media libraries with CleanR. Let's dive in. All right, we're going to start over here on my demo server. So click on apps. In the search box, type in CleanR. And if you're not familiar with that, it is C-L-E-A-N-A-R-R. -R. There you'll find a little ghost looking icon. That is the correct one. So go ahead and hit install. And here you'll find all the container details. Since I don't have Plex installed in the demo server, I'm going to jump over to my production server and show you what I've got set up in there. So in the container details, you fill out the information that applies to you. In this case, the Plex base URL is the first item. That's going to be the address that your Plex server is located at. If you don't know where that's at, under your Dockers, you'll find your Plex container. Go ahead and click on the icon and then go to the web UI. And that should take you right to the address that you need. The Plex token. That was a challenge, trying to find out where that was actually located. So let me save you some hassle and show you exactly how to get to it. I'll drag mine over here so you can see where it's located at. So to find that, you go into any library that you want, and once in there, you click on a video. In the bottom right corner of that video, there'll be a series of three dots. You click on those dots, go to the very bottom where it says Get Info, click on that, and then from there, at the very bottom, it says View XML. Go ahead and click on that one. Once the XML page comes up, go to the top address bar, all the way to the right in there, the last bit will be Plex token equals, and then a random series of letters and numbers. The ending series of letters and numbers is the information that you need. So you can copy that, and then go back to your container, and paste that information into where it says Plex token. The next section is library names. In there, you want to put in the library names that you'd like the CleanR Docker to scan. In this case, I've added movies, TV shows, and TV documentaries. Note that each one of these is separated by a semicolon. And if you're unsure of your library names, you can always go back to your Plex server. They will all be listed on the left-hand side. The next thing we need to do is check the port number. By default, the port is 5000. On my server, 5000 was already used, so I had to change it to 5080. To check to see if yours is open, down below click on the Show Docker Allocations, and all of your port numbers will be listed there. The easiest way I've found is if you just do find, in this case, control F, and type in the number you're looking for, 5000, and it shows me that it is used down here. So that's why I had to change it. So let's see if 5080 is available. I've got it selected there, and it shows that it is being used by CleanR, which is what we're installing. If you continuously find that yours is used, just keep changing the numbers till you find something that is not used. In this case, it hasn't found anything for that, so 5081 would be fine. The config is fine. We can leave the rest of this the way it is and then hit apply. All right, back in your Docker containers, you'll see the CleanR is now installed and running. Now let's open it up and see what it can do. Go ahead and click on the icon and then open the web UI. All right, while that's doing its thing, let me tell you a quick little story. The other day I had a weird issue with my Plex. It just kind of stopped working all of a sudden. Decided to restart the Docker for it. And upon doing that, it aired out which I thought was kind of weird. Didn't think too much about it, so I just restarted the server. When it came back up, none of the Dockers worked. When I checked the Dockers under settings, it said it was corrupted. My heart sank. Was not looking forward to rebuilding the whole thing. But luckily, I had a solution already in place, so we'll talk about that more at the end. All right, we're back into the CleanR app here. If when you first go into CleanR, it comes up with an error number two, no such file or directory found, it's a fairly easy fix. Let me show you how to do that. If you go back to your container and you go to the edit option, down at the very bottom here where it says config, you'll see this container path front end. You want to edit that. And right here where it says container path slash front end, you change that to slash config and then save it. And then you reapply it. And then the next time you go back into your cleaner Docker, it should load up fully. At this point, cleaner will start scouring your different libraries that you've selected and show you the result from what it's found. If it's not doing that, in the top left corner, you can click on the double little arrows. It'll go through and start its scan. And the results will be shown on the screen here. 
For mine, since I've already ran this, in the top right, it shows you the lifetime space saved. For my movies category, it's saved me 12.7 gigabytes. Under the TV documentaries, which is what we're looking at here, I have not done anything in there yet. And under TV shows, it's saved 7.3 gigs. Some basic information across the top here. It says the content found. It's found 13 items. It's got 13 selected. And of those 13 files, it's totaling 8.8 .8 gigabytes of data. What you need to do now is look at the list, go through each item one by one, and make sure that they're actually duplicates. You could simply hit delete selected items. These are the ones that CleanR has flagged as the ones to be deleted. By default, CleanR selects the lowest quality files first, and then if they're the same quality, it actually goes by file size. So for the first selected item up here, you can see that it's basically 820 megabytes, and the one below it that's selected is one gigabyte. If you look at the file size, you can see that the one that's selected is actually a lower quality video file. But if you look to the right, you can see the file name and the path to that file. And if you look at these, those don't match. So I don't want to delete that. I will unselect that one. Right now, I'm just going to not worry about those files, but I'll come back and select which ones I want it to ignore later. If we look down here at the bottom, this rock and roll road rage, you see the file sizes are identical. The runtime is identical. The video size is identical. Resolution, everything is identical on this. If you look at the file names to the right, you'll see that one is listed under season 2017 and the other one is just the file name itself. The file names are match, so we know that that is in fact a duplicate. I could unselect all of these ones that are currently selected, go to the top and click delete selected items. Or the easiest way for this, since I know it's just this one file here, is just to select the one I want to get rid of. In this case, since it's not categorized right, I'll just get rid of that one. Hit delete, delete item, and it cleans it out of your library. Now if we go back to the top and refresh this with the double arrows, you'll notice that the TV documentary category now shows you the space that it's saved up there. And that's a lifetime running total, so it's just kind of nice to see how much space this program has actually saved you. So on this top file again, if we look at that, we know that the runtimes are different, file size is different, the names are different, so we know that that is not a duplicate. So we can just ignore that one. So we just click on ignore there, hit ignore item, and that'll remove it from its list. So there you go. CleanR is installed and all set up. Let me know in the comments how much space CleanR has saved you. I was surprised that I had over 20 gigabytes of data saved so far. Oh, and before we go, I want to touch back on that Docker corruption. Like I said, I was not looking forward to recovering all that data, putting in all that work to recover all those containers and get them all set up again. But luckily, I had this. Check it out in the video below. See you next time.